Hi, this is Jeremy, and I'm here for another take completely different on membrane transport. In biological systems, there's a membrane surrounding the cell that controls what comes in and out of the cell. Let me be a little more creative and replace that cell with a restaurant. Now, some of this stuff is just not really sinking into you. Let me use this illustration to sort a few things out. So the wall of this restaurant is like the membrane and it is selectively permeable. If someone were to drive up to the restaurant, some sort of ninja, on a motorcycle, it's probably not somebody you'd want driving straight into the restaurant. That would be damaging. So that wall is selectively permeable. If someone rode up on a horse or a car, you also would not want them into the restaurant. So this barrier is a good thing. It's selective. You do want people into the restaurant. You need customers. And so you ask them to kindly dismount and come in. Oops, I have this turned around. You can see it here through the front door. And so Having a passageway in, they'll take their seat in the restaurant and be waited on by one of the employees, the yellow ninja, who comes in the back door. What I just showed you is a fairly nice example of facilitated diffusion. These people came into the restaurant. They were facilitated by these doorways. Now, there are other items they could come in and out through simple diffusion. There's vents and windows like this um, and this where air can freely flow in and out, um, where other things like heat can come in and out so that everybody can breathe and not be too stuffy inside the restaurant. So that would be simple diffusion. They don't need a special passageway. Uh, the walls are not to discriminating when it comes to air and heat and things like that, or even light for that matter. I want to have plenty of light in the restaurant. Okay, so um, capitalizing on the idea of facilitated diffusion again, naturally customers tend to self-regulate. They'll line up outside the door and they'll keep coming in and diffusing in, but if there's a whole pile of people outside, they're not likely to come in. They'll probably just continue to spread out and go away. You know, if it's over a 30 minute wait, you don't really want to come in. So there's the laws of diffusion coming in. People tend to spread out. They don't like to be crowded. But you um, want plenty of business and so you're going to have to spend some energy or maybe some money. We can use money, there's our little Lego money, as an analogy for ATP. ATP is like the cellular currency. And so we're going to start paying people to come in. You offer them coupons or discounts and say, I'll pay for part of your meal. And now that provides some incentive. Now more people want to come in. and take a seat where well, you really pack the house now that's a nice example of primary active transport you've gotten a good concentration of individuals in um, by spending some energy or hard-earned cash remember secondary active transport is a bit trickier and so Right now, a little worried about potentially breaking fire codes. This restaurant is getting pretty crowded, and people are seeing the wait and the crowd and maybe just not wanting to come in. You make a little more space, um, and you're not quite wanting to let anybody else in. So this time, you're resisting them coming in, but you see your friend Pete. Here's Pete. Hi, Pete. 
And Pete says, well, you know, I have these two buddies. Um, and, you know, we go way back. So could we all come in together? Okay, Pete, you know, since it's you, since you're my friend, um, then I'm going to let you and your buddies in. And we're going to pack this even tighter, even though um, people were feeling extra crowded. I needed a different incentive to come in. Maybe a poor analogy, but it's not money. You're not paying people to come in. You're not giving them coupons. You're letting them in for a different reason. And that somewhat illustrates the difference between primary and secondary active transport there. Now, there's that other thing, vesicular transport. All right, everybody, let's move aside here for a minute. So, that wasn't it. Let's say you are doing such great business that you order a brand new oven. Fantastic, look at that thing. It's a thing of beauty. You need to get it inside the restaurant, but it doesn't fit in the back door. It doesn't fit in the front door. So we need a new way for that to come in. Um, we might need to knock down a wall or something like that, but not the whole wall. Maybe a roll-up door would have been a nice idea to install. Now that can come in. And that's a bit like endocytosis. Bringing something in through a different method altogether, um, not through these doors, but through maybe a roll-up door. Uh, a lot of times we'll have that extra little compartment in a receiving area so that all the flies and everything don't come in and out. Okay, one more sort of idea. So you get a catering gig and you have all this food that you've made. There's my little it's banana. All right. So we've made all this food. We want to get it out, but it really doesn't make sense to ship it out one piece at a time. Yeah, we could do it this way. But the handy thing about vesicles is that you can carry a lot of things at once. So I have this little box. I'm going to put all these food items in a box. Now they're all together, packaged up, and I can do exocytosis with those. Uh, put my oven in place. I'm going to come back to my roll-up door. I'm going to bring those guys out. Roll that door up real quick. All right, now I'm good to go. Exocytosis. Hopefully that helps uh, sort of humanize some aspects of the 